My name is Richard Wan, and this is my presentation on the Upper Peninsula. The first part of this video will be on the Upper Peninsula's geography. Now, as many of you may know, Michigan and the Upper Peninsula were formed after glaciers melted and became our Great Lakes. And these glaciers left us some beautiful landmarks, like the Painted Rocks, the Arch Rock, and Tequamanon Falls. The highest point in UP could be found in the Porcupine Mountains, with that height being 1,958 feet high. The most beautiful part of the Upper Peninsula, I think, would be the Kitch Itty Kippy Big Spring. This lake can be found near Manistique, Michigan, and it is spring-fed, so it has a constant temperature of 45 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer and the winter. Part two of this video will be the prehistory of the Upper Peninsula. The first known inhabitants of the Upper Peninsula were tribe-speaking Algonquin languages. These tribes were known as the Menomi, the Noquit, and the Mishinimaki. These tribes relied on fishing for most of their food, and there were some foraging as well. The third part of this video will focus on the explorers of the Upper Peninsula. The first European man to discover the Upper Peninsula would be a man named Etienne Brule. He was hired by the French government to find new trade routes for pelts and to find the Native Americans for the Jesuits to convert to Roman Catholicism. The most influential of these explorers, though, would be Father Pierre Jacques Marquette, who first saw Michigan when he arrived at the Sioux Mission in 1668, and he explored much of the upper coast of the Upper Peninsula. However, Father Marquette's biggest contribution to the Upper Peninsula was the founding of missions in Sault Ste. Marie, St. Ignace, and La Pointe. Sadly, Father Marquette passed away May 18, 1675, at the age of 38, near Ludington. Fun fact, Fort Michelet Mechanic was built during this time. Part 3 of this video will focus on the events from 1763 to the year 1836. Now, as many of you may know, the French and Indian War had a huge effect on America because it gave Britain new lands out west, more specifically, the Upper Peninsula. Though the Upper Peninsula did not contribute to the Revolutionary War, its first big thing that happened to it was the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. What this ordinance did was it showed a disputed area between Michigan and Ohio, and this disputed area led to the Toledo War. Of 1835 to 1836. Now, this war was important for the Upper Peninsula because it took them from Wisconsin and gave them to Michigan in exchange for Ohio getting the Toledo Strip. Fun fact the person who actually brokered the peace between Ohio and Michigan would be none other than President Andrew Jackson. Part 5 Mining in the Upper Peninsula. From 1843 to the 1920s, the Upper Peninsula was the only place on Earth where pure, workable native copper was found in commercial quantities. The first mining rush came to Copper Harbor. All travels by boat, there were no roads. Copper Harbor became a bustling sea town. Similar to the gold rush in California, boom towns began to spread around areas of copper. With the Sioux Locks opening in 1855, production and immigration increased, commerce and copper shipping were cheaper, and in connections to the eastern industrial centers were more effective. Soon railroads were built up to the entire area and the Kibwana Peninsula was a huge hub for copper mining. Most of the people who worked these mines were Swedish and Irish immigrants, but with every boom must come a bust. And in the 1920s, copper mining sharply declined. The last copper mine though did close in only 1995. Similar to copper mining, Iron mining had had its boom and bust, but thankfully there are still some mines left near Marquette. For example, a mine opened up in 2014. Part 6, the modern day UP. With the failure of the copper mines in the 1920s and after World War II in the 1950s, people needed new jobs. With the opening of the Br Mackinac Bridge, November 1st, 1957, tourism began to present itself as a job maker. On looking back through the Upper Peninsula's history, it's easy to see, just like the rest of the United States, that's had its ups and downs, its booms and busts, 
and it's had a very long and storied history. And on top of that, it's got some very beautiful nature. The song in the background is The Up Peninsula by Soup Jan Stevens. I drove all night to find my child in strange. 